As someone who is trying to the best of my ability to strive towards holiness, to be better in my faith, to come to know our Lord Jesus Christ and to live the way that he instructed, I can't help but be reminded of five big issues with Catholics today. We all fail and we all miss the mark. We all have seasons in our life when maybe we have less of a devotion than others. But I think if we are truly sincere in our faith, that we're gonna try and work on the issues that we have. And these five big issues, I think, are plaguing our church today. And it's something that we all need to work on. Number one, lack of joy. I mean, how many times do you go to mass or do you go to some liturgical event and you look around the room and you see people that look utterly miserable? And yet, when we have the opportunity to come together, it's meant to be a celebration. Like, like in the scriptures, 1 Thessalonians, that, that we're instructed to give thanks in all things, even in our sufferings, even in our trials, even when people are grumpy and they're, the person next to us took our seat in the pew, or whatever it is, that we are meant to give thanks, to have a joyous heart, and that our joy isn't dependent on circumstance, but our joy comes from the Lord. What frustrates me is when I see a group of Catholics who look utterly miserable in their faith, and I wanna just be like, be happy. This is how we let the world know that Jesus Christ has changed us and transformed us, is that we're not the same as everybody else because we live the joy that we have in Christ. Let's be joyful. The second big problem is a spirit of elitism. Like that people think that they are better than other people. That they have this because I do these devotions or because I participate in this particular group that I am better or more elite than other people. Because I go to this particular mass or because of whatever. I mean, this spirit of elitism is really divisive. Like it divides the church. And we are all members of the body of Christ. We're all in this together. And yeah, granted, we are on a journey together, to kind of like the Israelites in the desert. We are journeying together on the way to this new promised land of heaven. And each of us might be starting from a different starting point. Like somebody might be have just joined the church and is just learning all this for the first time. And somebody else might have gone for 30 years and never really taken the opportunity to understand why they're doing all of these things or what this means. We might all be starting from a different place, but we're journeying together with the goal of making it to heaven. And so let's not be this mentality of elitism that, oh, I'm better than you because I do this or I've been doing this longer than you. Let's have humility in our hearts. And let's work together with one another, leading and journeying, bearing one another's burdens so that we can all make it to heaven together. Big issue number three, we as Catholics, we are so inward focused that we like to surround ourselves with all of our comforts and our favorite devotions and the different Bible studies that we do. And we like to make it our own little closed circle. We like to stay inside the walls of this. That's why we have a hard time bringing the gospel outside the walls of the church. That's why we have a hard time of talking about faith and religion when we're not in our church setting and in our church groups is because we are so inward focused. What do I get out of this? What's in this for me? How is this improving me? Rather than being outward focused so that we can be the light to the world that we're called to be, so that we can bring hope to others who are around us. When we are inward focused, we forget what our mission is, to make disciples of all nations, that we are meant to go out and spread the gospel to all the world. And each of us has a part of that. When I was at a church, I saw this sign above the door that said, as you're leaving the church, you are now entering mission territory. And when we are inward focused, then we forget what our mission is, is that we are the ones who are commissioned to go out and to spread the gospel to the whole world. It's not just the priest's job or the bishop, it's not just the staff of the church, but each and every one of us who are baptized are baptized and called to be part of these missionary work. And we can't do that if we're inward focused. Issue number four, we become complacent. We become apathetic. Sometimes we get so caught up in going through the motions. You know, when we walk into the church and make the sign of the cross, or we genuflect and dip our hand in the holy water, when we go to our pew and we recite the words of the responses and sing the songs that we've sung hundreds of times before, that our minds can become unplugged. And we are reminded to not just go through the motions, not be just complacent where we're at, but we are continually being challenged to go deeper to go further. That, man, our faith is 2,000 years of, of mystery and great church fathers and, and theologians, and we can do so much more than to stay where we're at because maybe 
God has something more for us. Maybe he's calling us out of our comfort zones and he wants to challenge us to go deeper. Maybe he was challenging us to, to use new gifts and gifts and abilities that he's giving to us. Whatever it is that he doesn't want us to stay lukewarm. He doesn't want us to stay complacent or apathetic, but he wants us to step out and endure maybe some suffering and discomfort for his will in our lives. And the fifth issue that I see in the church today and that we struggle with as Catholics oftentimes is legalism. That we want to just check things off a list. That if I, if I just do these 10 things, these minimum requirements, then I'm good to go. And this kind of echoes, a, you know, on the same kind of tone of complacency. When we think of our faith simply as a list of rules, then we are missing the beauty and the grace of what God has for us. Right? When we think of our faith as transactional, like if I do this, then I will get this in return, then we're missing the relationship aspect of our faith. And it no longer becomes uh, an act of love, but it becomes uh, merely an obligation. And God doesn't want that for us. He wants us to want to choose him. He wants that for us to, to love him so much that we freely choose to take on these things, not in a legalistic mentality, not to do good works because because we feel like we have to out of obligation, but because we so love God that we can't help but want to do good works for Him. See, legalism, it prevents us from being able to experience a relationship with Jesus Christ in a profound way. But God wants to give us His grace and He gives us His grace so that we can do incredible things out of love for Him. And so let's not live our lives caught up in these big mistakes as Catholics because we are better than that. We're called to more than that. Let's return to the grace that God gives us and is working of the Holy Spirit so that we can be humble, so that we can be servants, so that we can know what our mission is and who it is that we are, and that we are loved by a God who created us and died for us. And we can share that message with the world. God bless you. Because COVID-19 has changed the way that I am able to do ministry, that I'm not able to travel to sing and speak at churches and schools right now, I am building an online community of faith where we can come together to be inspired and equipped to share and live our faith. I would love for you to be part of this community. Basically, I'm taking my passion and my zeal that I've presented to tens of thousands each year at conferences and schools and churches across North America, and I'm bringing that online so that we can reach even more people and I need your help. All of these resources, these CDs and these books and these videos, they take time and they take money to produce. Being a patron gives you access to my music and talks and faith resources and live streams and chat community, but most especially, it enables you to be part of a faith community online because we were never meant to be in this alone. We were never meant to be isolated. And so if that's something that you might find beneficial in your faith journey, I wanna invite you to check that out patreon.com slash chrisbray. So if this is something that you're able to support, I'd be so grateful.